Good morning, I am Kwan Yin, and this is I Have No Cut Cards Tarot. Uh, today is January 17th. It is very early in the morning. If you are touched uh, by any of my videos or they resonate with you in a way in which you are inspired to donate, my uh, Cash App and PayPal is listed in the description link. If anyone ever contacted you requesting money or a donation, it is not me. Please ignore it. If donating is not an option at this time and you still would like to bless the channel with encouragement uh, and positive energy, please hit that like and subscribe button. Now, please funnel through me clearly and directly for the intended collective, the energy and information needed and protect it from outside influences and low vibrational entities that seek to confuse and distort the divine messages. Please allow the intended listener to extract what is needed to put them on their highest path for their highest good and use my tongue to challenge the right words to deliver them plain and simple so as to be understood with clarity and provide insight to light their guided pathways in this lifetime and the next. Possibly. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you all something interesting that uh, happened. The night before last, I had a vision. I mean, it was an active vision. I was not, I was not asleep. I was completely awake and uh, conscious. And but I could not, I could not move my body. Uh, whenever I get my visions, whenever I get my visions, I'm unable to move my body. And. There was a, a whole angel that was standing right by my bedside. A whole angel was right by my bedside. Uh, it was like they were the one that was playing the vision for me in my head. And what I saw was a, a beach, a coastal line. And it was like a McDonald's or another, uh, another kind of fast food restaurant of some kind. Um, that was flooded and the foundation was coming, you know, apart and unheaved due to some kind of, um, it was some type of tsunami uh, because of what I thought in the vision was an earthquake that happened underwater uh, and it caused a tsunami. So after I saw the vision, um, after I had the vision, um, you know, the angel left my side and I was able to move my body again. So the next day, I went to my daughter and I told her, you know, I told her about my vision. I told her, I don't know where, but it's a huge body of water. It looked like a beach, like to an ocean, but it's, it's going to be some type of tsunami or something that's getting ready to happen. And, um... I saw a fast food restaurant. It was like a McDonald's or something that was uh, getting flooded. And um, she was like, okay, mommy. <laughs> like she always does, you know, cause she's like, oh boy, crazy ladies at it again, you know. But, um, you know, I figured at least tell somebody, at least tell somebody, you know. Uh, but, you know, I do need to learn how to trust my own intuition more, you know and not being worried or concerned, you know, about what people will think. So what, what actually ended up happening was this morning uh, when I looked at some news, I found out that just yesterday, due to a volcano, an underwater volcano erupting, it caused a tsunami on the island of Toga and uh, the American Samoa. And now they're under a tsunami watch in Northern California, in the Bay Area, in Santa Cruz. And I sent my daughter a message <laughs> this morning. You know, I sent the link to the news story to her. I haven't heard back from her yet, you know, but I just thought that, you know, I thought that was very interesting, you know, that, you know, I 
I feel like I should have said something on YouTube uh, after I had the vision. It came to me for a reason so that I could say something and I did not, you know, because I was doubting my own intuition, you know, and um, instead, so I wouldn't feel crazy, I just told it to my daughter. You know, I can't wait to hear from her today. Um, this happened to me one other time a little while ago. Uh, my mother passed away on January the 4th. Uh, sometime before that, uh, I sent a group text because I had a vision uh, of a family member in my intermediate circle, you know, that's brother, sister, uh, mother, father, your intermediate circle. Uh, and I saw a family member uh, of mine that was hooked up to, you know, I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but you know those bags when you, they can't go to the bathroom on their own anymore. Uh, it was a bag that they were hooked up to and they were sitting in a chair and they were getting some type of treatment with a needle in their arm and they were dying and they had, but the only thing is they had red bumps all over their face. And I sent a text, a group text out to uh, my intermediate family members and I remember one of my brothers text, which one of us is it? And I said, it doesn't matter, you know, because I really didn't want to frighten anyone. I said, just make sure you all are not being toxic and that you keep your energy clear and you're being high vibrational because you will attract illness and sickness to your body if that happens, you know. And then not too much longer, my mother ended up um, practically on her deathbed with one of those bags on her side. The interesting thing about it, though, was my mother is not the one that I saw in the vision. It was one of my siblings. And I did not want to say who it was, but it was one of my siblings. And it looked like they were getting um, some type of uh, uh, cancer treatment. That's what it looked like. Um, through, uh, through uh, it looked like they were getting chemotherapy uh, through um, some liquid that was being injected uh, in their arm with a needle and they were also hooked up to one of those bags and they had red spots all over their face and it just really frightened me because I was thinking you know I know what happens when you have too much toxic energy built up in your system and you spend a life instead of healing you spend your life projecting onto others so you could just get some of that toxic energy out of your system so you can feel better that's how that that's what you're doing you're, you're, you're trying to cleanse yourself and um, and and prevent yourself your body is trying to prevent itself from being sick by releasing that toxic energy into others but when others start to cut you off so that you cannot release that toxic energy to them you have nowhere else to turn that toxic energy to except for whomever is still in your life which would be your children or your mate or whomever whomever has to be in contact with you that's where it's gonna go and if you can't divulge that toxic energy there then at that point you're either going to have to heal or you're gonna have to uh, ingest and hold in that toxic energy which will lead to your demise it will lead to sickness it will put you right in the grave. So it is so important. It is so important to heal. It is so important to heal. Forget about your ego and your pride. It is, it, it's more important to heal. I know some people would rather die and come back and repeat the same lessons over than to have to look at themselves and admit to themselves what they are doing and who they are. But I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with this reading. Uh, it's really early in the morning still. Uh, it snowed in Atlanta last night. But <laughs> y'all know how that goes. The snow didn't even stick. It just got really, really cold. Uh, I think it was uh, taken way too seriously. But, you know, don't get mad at me, y'all. <laughs> They're going to kick me out of Atlanta. Okay, so it looks like, uh, to start with, we had 
uh, let's see, we have the Five of Cups uh, in reverse here. It looks like uh, someone could have been in a very uh, uh, sad energy possibly, uh, but they could be uh, healed or feeling better now. But let me clarify, let me just clarify. Clarify this Five of Cups reverse, please. Okay. Oh, okay. We got a page of wands here. It could be a fire sign. It could be a younger fire sign. It could be a child or a young person, possibly, or someone that uh, possibly might be making some progress with something. Okay, clarify the Five of Cups reverse. Okay, there was some kind of a conflict here. The Hermit, which is a Virgo card. Reversed. Some kind of a conflict. Okay, this is somebody that, this could be a Virgo here. This could possibly be a Virgo or uh, someone that was in isolation, but not in a good way. You know, in the upright, the hermit, like I said, uh, is a teacher uh, that is in isolation to study, like a monk or, or j you know, just someone that uh, uh, studies and masters something. But in the reverse, you know, it's someone that's isolated, uh, possibly due to something uh, bad happening. Uh, or some negative reason they're isolated for now or it represents a Virgo man or a woman uh, now we have the two of wands reversed here uh, which upright of course uh, is the world card it represents someone that's planning but when uh, it's reversed it and I think it means someone's working on themselves because it came in next to the hermit card reversed and it's a young person so this could be um, this could be a, a younger person that was conflicted about something uh, that could possibly be a Virgo or just someone that's in isolation right now uh, due to some kind of sadness. Sadness about some type of conflict that might have taken place. And uh, while they're in isolation, it looks like they might be working on themselves, which is a good thing. Uh, because uh, the Traveler card here uh, in the reverse means they're staying put. They're, they're, they're pulling back into themselves they're working on themselves okay so we got a virgo possible virgo or a young person that's working on themselves that's in hermit mode uh, that has isolated themselves uh for some reason clarify this high priestess card that can be a pisces the high priestess card is a pisces or someone that's using their intuition okay we got the eight of pentacles which represents someone putting a lot of energy or a lot of hard work into something Okay, clarify the high priestess, please. Seven. Seven of wands. Okay. High priestess card with the seven of wands. Uh, it, it was something, some type of conflict that they're working hard uh, to overcome. It, it, some kind of conflict happened, and, and they were, they're working hard to overcome it. It, it, it could be something mental, that a, a, a challenge that they're trying to overcome mentally, possibly. A, a, a very big conflict that caused them to go uh, into isolation a little bit because the uh, Five of Wands just came out, uh, whatever that conflict was that occurred. Clarify the High Priest. Oh, okay, that was it. I saw it. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're in their head. They're really in their head about this conflict and they're putting a lot of effort into trying to sort things out so this is a uh, possibly this is a high priestess this might be someone that's normally very intuitive this this can be a very intuitive person that's normally very high vibrational uh that uh possibly even uh psychic you know that knows things a person that's very intuitive sharp that uses their intuition that does use their intuition that's sharp but they, there's some type of conflict that they were in their head about um, uh, that was causing a barrier or a conflict that caused them to go into isolation. And they're putting a lot of mental energy and work into trying to uh, fix whatever that conflict is. So they're working on it. Uh, if this is a high vibrational, high priestess, uh, whoever this uh, person is, uh, if something uh, went wrong for them, uh, or they were presented with a conflict they may, may not have handled in the best way. 
uh, possibly now they're taking a look back at it to work through their feelings and work through whatever that conflict or issue is. And that's what all high vibrational people do. You know, no one is perfect. You know, you can't expect anybody just because they're spiritual, you know, that does not mean perfect. I promise you, I promise you, especially me, anybody that is still in human skin that has to eat, drink, go to the bathroom, keep their body warm and cold to stay alive, as long as you are in human flesh on this earth, you're still learning. You, the, the universe is vast. You are still getting lessons. You're still working on mastery. When you have mastered earth, you're not going to be in a human suit. I mean, unless you jump into somebody's body, you know, and that's a whole nother thing. But you're, you're, you're not going to be still living a 3D life here on earth because you will have passed on to a higher plane of living. You won't even be able to see be seen with the eyes unless you want to be. Because you will be vibrating so high, no one will be able to see you with the naked eye. Just like, you know, water, uh, ice turns to steam. When you speed up the vibration high enough, you know, with water, it turns into steam. So it's in the air. It still exists, but you cannot see it. And it's the same thing, you know, when you uh, pass all your lessons and your vibration has raised past the human body, you still exist. You still exist, but you exist on a higher level, in a higher plane. Uh, you're like the angels, you know, you're like, you know, you're, uh, you know, you don't, pe people don't understand you're surrounded by beings that live amongst us that you cannot see because they're in a way higher vibration. That's why some of y'all that do some low vibrational shit that think y'all getting away with stuff, you know, these beings be sipping tea and looking at y'all and laughing. <laughs> okay, clarify the tower reversed. Clarify the tower reversed. Yes, whoever this person in isolation is, uh, they are, they are avoiding a tower. They are avoiding a disaster of some kind, possibly. Uh, by not giving in, by not giving in to possibly pride and ego. Whatever was keeping them stuck in their head, whatever the conflict was that had somebody stuck in their head, something of a lower vibration like pride and ego uh, is no longer keeping them here with the devil reversed. That's what I'm getting. The devil is reversed. This person, I feel like someone's taking a higher path. Someone might be in seclusion, meditating, trying to do the right thing and take a higher path, possibly. Clarify uh, the tower reverse, please. Clarify the tower reverse. Clarify the tower reverse. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Someone is resisting uh, uh, the urge to uh, uh, be in their lower, lower nature uh, and be low vibrational. Someone is resisting uh, with the devil reverse, you know, uh, submitting to their ego and submitting to pride, you know, so that they can overcome the conflict that they're having. See, high vibrational people, a high vibrational person, you know, they can't sit somewhere where they're not entirely sure that something that they did was wrong or right and ignore it and move past it for long before it starts to eat away at them. And that's because we're high vibrational. When something does not resonate with us, even if we feel like we made a wrong decision about something or thought or took a wrong action, we're not going to be able to sit in that long without making the correction because it's like vomit. That toxic energy, uh, sometimes we feel like we got to vomit it out. We got we to gotta cleanse ourselves. It doesn't vibrate. It's like we ate something. It's like eating something bad that didn't agree with you. When you're high vibrational and you make a mistake, it's hard for you to sit with that mistake in your gut, on your stomach, energetically or physically. It's hard to sit with it. And the reason it's hard to sit with it is because you resonate at a higher frequency. And whatever was done... If it was of a low frequency, you're not going to be able to hold that in to your energy. 
because it doesn't fit in there. It doesn't it, it doesn't fit in. It feels uncomfortable. It feels like you need to vomit it out. You know, I ate something bad. I ingested something that was toxic, something that was bad, and I got to get it out. This is not me at all. So whoever this is, you know, they are resisting uh, their lower nature and lower self, uh, lower thoughts and actions. And it looks like uh, they might possibly be wanting to either make amends with someone. Uh, if they fell out with someone, they're wanting to uh, come back and exchange uh, have an exchange with someone possibly because they want to avoid a tower they want to avoid a disaster this is I, I feel like this might be a righteous person I feel like this is a righteous person that uh, like I do every other day <laughs> And anybody else on the planet, I don't care if you high or low vibrational, you know, you're still going to have negative thoughts from time to time. The only difference is higher vibrational people, if they have a negative thought or say something or do something, uh, um, they have the ability to identify, to have the awareness, wait a minute, let me take a second, this doesn't agree with my energy. And then they have the ability to isolate that thought separate it from them hold it in the air and examine and look at it in isolation and be like okay this does not align because now that I'm looking at this from all perspectives I see where this is not in alignment with my path or how I think or what is high vibrational so I'm going to have to clear this right here out clarify the five of swords Whatever type, I feel like this person, whoever this is, might have possibly walked away from the situation energetically initially. I don't know why I'm looking at this. Um, I don't know why that little, um, the sun right here, the sun, if you can see it. I was drawn to that, uh, to the sun, the sun's face in that picture. And it looks like the sun is frowning uh, on the person as they're walking away because it's like, it looks like disappointment because somebody at first, whatever that conflict was, somebody at first tried to walk away from it energetically and didn't want to deal with it. That's the energy I'm getting and my eyes went straight to that sun that son looks uh, really disappointed that this person tried to walk away, you know, energetically from whatever the conflict was and possibly might have, uh, you know, gone to friends to try to, to try to forget about what happened and to just celebrate, possibly to celebrate with friends or, you know, just uh, forget about it and have a good time with others. But I'm getting an energy that whatever it was that was bothering them may have come back up again, even if they were talking to friends about it. I, I feel like, I don't know why, I feel like, one. you see, one of these friends here has their hand on this person. I feel like this is the person that's standing out right here in white. And the other two uh, women here are wearing red. And I feel like one of these women uh, have their hand on, on, on the back of the one woman. So I feel like whatever the conflict was, they wanted to walk away emotionally and energetically from it and just forget all about it and, and reunite with their friends and have a good time. But in conversation with their friends, uh, I feel like someone, one of their friends, provided them some type of insight and good advice that they talked to. That's why her hand is on her back. She, you know, this is someone that was trying to help, help this person that was in isolation with their issue. They talked to them. They might have mentored them a little bit and open their eyes and help them to process and work through it. That's what it looks like. The person tried to, like Jonah and the whale, the person tried to go away from their problem and ignore it and block it out. But when they got together to celebrate with friends, it came back up and someone, uh, someone 
gave them some good advice and insight and help open their eyes. That's what I'm getting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because at first, with this Five of Swords here, at first this person just wanted to be right. Whoever the person was, at first they just wanted to be right. Because it's not fun being wrong. You tell me one person that likes to lose in a contest or a competition. You show me one person on the planet Earth that anticipates and looks forward to being wrong about something or looks forward, you know, to not having the right answer. Uh, who looks forward to that? Who wants that? Don't we all want to be right all the time? Don't we all want to win? You know, so at first this person, you know, was disappointed, you know, uh, and they, did, they really didn't want to deal with the issue because it could possibly mean that they, they might have made a mistake or been wrong. And I don't know one person on the planet Earth that likes to be wrong. Nobody. Nobody likes to be wrong. Why? Why would you like to be wrong? That's silly. You know, so it's, un it's an understandable feeling. That's why it's hard for a lot of us, you know, uh, to take a look at ourselves and want to turn our backs to conflicts and issues for fear that what if I was wrong? What if I made a mistake? But it looks like, oh, it looks like in isolation and with that friend with the three of cups that uh, provided them some guidance, they might be getting some good karma. I feel like this person possibly might be, be being pushed forward by the universe because they got stuck here with the hangman it looks like they, they, they might have got stuck for a moment someone got stuck clarify uh, clarify the wheel of fortune please yeah they got stuck they got stuck because they were defensive they got stuck because they were defensive with this page of swords here. And I don't know one human, human being on this planet anyway, you know, that wants to be wrong about something and then um, when they're not, might have a little feeling of defensiveness. This is a normal human emotion. You are not to be crucified and hung up on a cross because you're a human being. Everybody has been defensive at one point in their life, not one, constantly throughout their life. I'm defensive when people tell me I'm wrong too. Whether I'm wrong or right, I'm defensive. The being defensive is a natural uh, response. It's a natural response. You better be defensive to protect yourself because sometimes you write and you need to stand on your square and take up for yourself. And that was keeping this per the, the person being defensive is what was keeping them bound. But I believe now they're going to have good karma uh, with this Wheel of Fortune here uh, because uh, they're no longer this Eight of Swords here. Because being defensive was keeping them in a mental prison. They were being defensive and it kept them in a mental prison and forced them into isolation for a short or long period of time. But help from good support, a good supportive friend, you know, was able to allow them. To, let me tell you, when you have a good friend on your side that you know is coming from a good space in the right energy and there's no underlining negative energy or intention and they're coming from a space of love and they, and, and they talk to you and mentor you, you know, uh, the truth about something. And they're not gossiping to others about you. They're not talking to others, you know, about a mistake you may or may not have made. You know, they come to you privately. And they keep your conversation private. And, and, and they provide you an honest, objective opinion. It helps you to lower your defenses. I feel like uh, somebody al allowed someone to lower their defenses defenses because they came at them in the right energy they came at them in the right energy and it helped them to release themselves and become unbound please clarify the ten of uh, cups reverse
Yes. Yes. Yeah. This friend has wisdom. This friend has wisdom and might have a little more experience. This friend has wisdom and might have more experience. And in this six of pentacles here, it doesn't rep it doesn't always represent money. This represents uh, showing someone another way of doing something, another way of processing something. They gave them insight on another way of seeing something. The Six of Pentacles uh, represents, you know, once you've mastered a craft, you know, something new that you're starting is like the Page of Pentacles. And, you know, as you go through the Pentacles, you know, uh, you get to the Two of Pentacles, you're just getting good at what it is that you're working at and you're finding a way like juggling something. You know, you're learning to balance something new that you learned how to do. Then you get to the Three of Pentacles, you know, uh, which means now uh, you're able to work and show others how you did it. And so on and so forth. And, and by the time you get to the Six of Pentacles, you're able to give to others. So this, this is someone that was able to drop some jewels on this person to help them to avoid an ending. Because they knew it wouldn't be wise to end something. Maybe someone wanted to end a relationship with someone that they had this conflict with. The Five of Wands. Whoever they had, they were defensive with and had a conflict with, maybe they wanted to end it and this friend knew that it would not be wise or healthy for them uh, and they wanted to help them to avoid an ending. Or maybe this person wanted to end something because they were, they were hurt about something and wanted to go into isolation and this person dropped some jewels on them from their past experience. To show them another way of looking at something. Another way of processing something. So they gave them something. Because it would not have been wish fulfillment. With this. With this. They knew that. With this ten of cups here. It would not have been wish fulfillment for them. Uh, to end something. They were helping them to avoid an ending by dropping jewels on them of experience, of another way of looking because they knew this person was stuck with this hangman. Clarify uh, the Queen of Wands reverse. <laughs> this could be, this has to do with control, but because it's coming out with the Queen of Wands, I believe this is a Cancer energy. I believe this Queen of Wands might be a Cancer energy. So you got a can't you? It's a possible Cancer here showing up as a Queen of Wands, which is a low vibrational woman or man that can come off as being very inspirational and very charismatic. That can that can pass themselves off as someone that uh, knows what's best for people and is a leader. But because uh, this person is in the reverse, I believe this is a cancer. This is a cancer that might not have put uh, the right type of work, that, that didn't want to put any real work or effort into helping someone. They might have done something or influenced someone to do something uh, that was very negative. That's why we got a queen of wands reversed here. Let me go a little deeper into this uh, possible Cancer uh, Queen of Wands reversed here. Clarify this Queen of Wands reverse a little more for me, please. Yes, please clarify the Queen of Wands reverse. Y yes! Yes! That's exactly what it was. This is a very shallow, empty vessel. This is a very shallow person that lacks substance. 
that's why we have the king of pentacles reversed here whoever this cancer energy is whoever this cancer energy is that they're a very shallow person and they really lack substance they lack substance and they might have been the one that influenced uh whoever this high priestess is which could possibly be that virgo or any other sign but i'm getting virgo ace of swords this is the truth this is the truth when the ace of swords comes out behind it that means that that what i just said is the exact truth that's what happened here this person uh, wasn't really interested in putting any real work any real work into doing something constructive or saying things that were constructive or influencing this person uh, to uh, do the right thing. It was for their own selfish needs. It was for their own selfish reasons, whether it was revenge or whatever it was. Whoever this cancer is right here, whoever this cancer is right here, they were a negative influence. Although they passed themselves off as being a, 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 a positive influence. But they were able to pass themselves off. But, they, but they're really an empty vessel. They, they, they really have and lack substance. It's a, it's a type of person that uh, copies other people, copies other, uh, other people's uh, personality and just repeats what other people say. But if you get them alone in the corner and try to have a deep conversation with them about something, they really can't go that deep. You know, you get them isolated somewhere and ask them to further elaborate on something that you're talking about and they really can't. All they can do is mimic what they heard someone else say up until what they can remember. But then, when they can't remember anything else beyond that, uh, uh, they'll make up an excuse to end the conversation because this person lacks substance. And I believe this person might have played a part in guiding possibly a uh, Virgo in the wrong direction or influencing them uh, uh, indirectly uh, in a wrong way possibly by playing victim to them or emotionally blackmailing them in, in, in a sense emotionally uh, please clarify the Queen of Cups And it was to backstab and betray this Queen of Cups here. That's it. That's it. It was, it was done to... The Queen of Cups is a, a Pisces or any other water sign. And it's someone that is loving. That is intuitive. It's someone that is emotional. They can regulate their emotions. But they're very loving and open to everyone. They... they they don't force advice on anyone, but people come to them anyway because people love their objective way of looking at things. People love how non-judgmental they are and how open to everyone they are. They're a personality like, like a Mother Teresa type. A lot of people love this Queen of Cups. And this cancer energy here that lacks substance was jealous. And it was something else that... What was that card? I just saw it. It'll pop out again if it's supposed to. That cancer energy was jealous. It was jealous of this Queen of Cups. So they manipulated this Queen of Cups. This Queen of Cups, I believe, is related to this Virgo in some type of way. In some type of way, all three of these people have some type of connection. It can be friends, family, or other. But all three of these people are connected. Please clarify. Yeah, here it is. Whoever that Virgo is, it, 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 they were confused because they have divided loyalty. For some reason, maybe they're related. Maybe they are related to both uh, the Cancer and the Pisces. So they had divided loyalty between both of them. So it's, it was confusing to them. If, if, this, if, if, if whoever that Virgo is, this high priestess Virgo is, 
if, if they're uh, related to both of these people, uh, I can understand why they would have divided loyalty. And there, there was some confusion there. And it looks like this cancer may have, uh, that's coming out at the king of pentacles reversed, which is a person that lacks substance. I can see how they could easily manipulate this person because chances are this person loves both of these people. But this cancer used that person's love and emotion for them to manipulate them so they could sit back with the seven of pentacles here and, and, and watch it and watch and see the chaos that it forms so, uh, so that they can eat from the negativity. It's a negative person. They were watching. Because I have a feeling whoever this cancer energy is, they're always watching situations. You know, they're, doing, they're throwing rocks and hiding their hand and then they pull up to the table with a glass of wine so they can watch the damage. The Six of Cups here. Um, wow. I feel like I feel like this cancer might be doing this because they want to make an offer possibly to a person from the past. They want to make they, they want to make an offer to them. Clarify the six of cups, please. Please clarify. Thank you. They're wounded. They feel wounded. They, I believe this is someone they might have history with because this represents someone from your past, someone that you already know. This is someone they already have a relationship with, possibly, you know, this Queen of Cups here. And they feel wounded by this person, possibly a narcissistic wound. You know how narcissistic wounds uh, uh, work. With narcissistic woundings, um, people feel wounded when they do something to hurt you. The narcissist does something to hurt you. And when you cut them off, that causes them a narcissistic wound. You wound a narcissist by cutting them off after they have hurt you. Because they're crazy. Please look at this man's eyes. He been bopped upside the head one too many times. Look at his eyes. That's, that's how the narcissist sees things. His eyes are rolling all up in his head. He's all confused and discombobulated. Chemically imbalanced all up and through his head. Because he's a narcissist, so he does not see things clearly. So the thing about it is, is when he does stuff to people and gets cut off, he deems that as you doing something to him, to hurt him. This person is wounded. Clarify the three of pentacles reverse, please. Please clarify the three of pentacles reverse. All right, y'all just want me to talk about it. I got you. I got you. This person was trying to and like I said I believe whoever this Queen of Wands who and, and that's why it came up under the Queen of Wands there you go right there that's why the spirits not going to give me a card for this they want me to keep on and going on forward with it whoever this cancer Queen of Wands is here in the reverse was wanting to win at all costs so they tried with the three of Pentacles here to work with others they try to work and use others to manipulate others to try to hurt this queen of cups here but i feel like people are walking away from them as they're starting to recognize uh how manipulative this person really is but they they were trying to get others and manipulate others to indirectly 
backstab and betray and hurt this Queen of Cups by using sympathy, by, by, by playing the victim role. That's why you got the Three of Pentacles here, working with others. But they're not going to be able to manip manipulate anymore. You know, after you've manipulated people but so many times, after a while, people's eyes begin to open and they begin to see clearer. They'll still be in your life, but, but they're going to watch you a little bit closer. Not for me. Me, me. I go no contact and cut you off. I'm not, I, don't, I don't even, if I can't trust you, I don't want you in my energy. You get past a certain age and stage in your life, you know, and if you have, to, if I got to question, even question you, I don't want you in my energy. I don't want no relationship with you. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to see you. If I have to question you, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are born in the same family that I came from. If you came through the same hole I came through. I don't care if you've been my bestest friend since kindergarten. I don't care what the hell. If I have to question you even the smallest bit. If I feel like I have to watch my back or be careful around you. I don't want you around. At this point in stage in my life, I don't want anyone around me that I have to watch my back with. If I get that energy from you or that vibe from you that you're okay to have in my life, but I do still have to kind of watch my back a little bit. I don't live like that anymore. I don't keep anyone in my circle like that anymore. I don't care who you are. If I feel the slightest chance that you would backstab and betray me, you will not be in my circle, period. You will be cut off. Spirit, finish this reading, please. The Virgo. Hermit. Here we go. Plan. gave me a whole storyline the Virgo this is the Virgo in this card the hermit but in, in this situation in this storyline right here this is the Virgo the Virgo is planning with a lot of energy and passion that now they're very passionate they're very passionate now about no longer uh, making an offer to someone in a devil energy. An empress reversed. An empress reversed. Uh, I don't feel like this was a love reading. You know, I don't feel like this was like a romantic love reading here. Uh, this, I, I believe this had to do with possibly friends and family. So this could be a Gemini here. The lover's reverse. Uh, the lover's card represents uh, Gemini energy. So it could possibly be a Gemini here, uh, possibly a Gemini with cancer in their chart or a, a Gemini, someone possibly uh, that could uh, be a Gemini cancer cusp because uh, Gemini does uh, cusp uh, cancer, the cancer sign as well. Yeah, so it looks like uh, this Virgo is uh, now planning uh, with a lot of passion in their soul and heart because of what has happened, you know, uh, I believe uh, to be very careful about offering energy and emotion. I don't think they're going to cut somebody off altogether, but I think they're going to be uh, very passionate about being very careful uh, about what type of energy exchange uh, they have with this person in this devil energy. I believe now they're seeing things for what it is. And they're now being very, very careful about this empress that the empress reversed. The empress reversed, you know, uh, can do some fucked up things because they can show their hand and face. They have a lot of life experience now, but sometimes instead of using that experience to lift them up and lift others up and do better, they can use it to try to take advantage of people. Now I know, now that I have experience, you know, uh, in dealing with emotions and dealing with passions, and dealing uh, with uh, um, finance, pentacles, and doing things, and I'm the empress, 
but I'm the Empress reversed. So I can use all of my experience because this is coming up as an Empress. So I can use all my past experience in life that I have not to better someone, but now I know better how to take advantage of people and how to use all of my experience as all those different queens uh, to better uh, to better try to control uh, someone's actions and how they think in a negative way. Yeah, this Virgo is going to be careful in what type of ener energetic or emotional exchange they offer in the future to whoever this uh, Cancer Gemini cusp here is. Uh, in the, going forward in the future, they're just going to be a little more careful with them. Okay. And I'm going to pull one advice card from the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. Hopefully no one is triggered by that name. You know, if you're triggered by the word witch, then what I say to you is stop watching Walt Disney. Stop watching TV. Stop watching Disney. Stop watching Cinderella and all of those stupid ass stories. Um, uh, because you're, you're, you're brainwashed and, and you get triggered very easily. Now, I'm not calling you stupid. Not at all. Uh, what I'm saying is... Everything that you know about everything that you have learned is something that you heard someone say or that was taught to you. So uh, you were programmed that a witch is someone is uh, that rides a broom. She got a green nose with a lump in it, with a pointy hat. She rides a broom, mixes frogs and things. Uh, all, a, all, all a witch is is a healer. It's a healer. It's someone that understands herbs and plants. You can call a doctor a witch, basically. That's why they started calling uh, uh, African uh, doctors witch doctors. You know, when all they were, you know, a lot of Europeans, you know, they would go and study under doctors, you know, in Africa, South America, and all over the world. They would study under these people to understand what the plants do uh, that grow from the ground, uh, their properties and herbs, and how they heal the body and how to use them. Uh, also, they would also teach them, you know, how to move energy uh, and how energy works within the body and outside the body uh, you know they would teach them divination uh, you know metaphysics and also uh, on the 3d about medicine and plants now they came back here to America and titled themselves doctors and brought that same knowledge into books in colleges and then they turned around and the same people they learned from they called them witches and witch doctors they gave them the name witches and then the campaign you know through Disney and through you know storybooks you know of what a witch is you know it created a stigma in your mind that makes you fearful of the word witch okay leave that there give me one advice card please uh, to end this reading oh boy the hernia cards give give me an advice card please And hopefully I don't get a hernia trying to shuffle these cards. All right, that's it right there. Oh, thank God it came quick. Woo! Oh, oh my God. These are some heavy-ass cards. <laughs> Lost my breath. Okay. What do we have here? Hmm, interesting. All right, so... This card is called the Messenger of Fire. We got a ram up there. This is the Messenger of Fire. And this other card here is Ten of Fire. Hmm. Okay, we got a message here. Hmm. We got a message here about fire. So let's find out what the message is and how it may possibly resonate with today's message. All right, Messenger of Fire. Do I have a page? Oh, man. 
messenger of fire. Yes. The messenger, young, strong, and shiny like the sun, whose sign is on a glowing shield, stands beside a huge ram with the golden horns. Uh, one strength, the other truth. Mm. Together they look out across a world that is bright and new, filled with light and shimmering uh, heat and meaning. At the messenger's feet, beneath the earth's most ancient, ancient tree, a pine cone encompasses a blueprint of the future. His task has appeared. He picks it up and places it in his pocket. Energy courses through him. He is ready to spring into action. Truth requires light to be seen and time to become wisdom. The essence. Readiness signs have been given. Seize the moment. The universe will speak to you with anything that is available. But you must pay attention or you'll, be, you'll miss the message. Learn the language of the sacred, uh, the sacred, the vocabulary of symbols. Here is an ancient sign. The scarab is the lowliest creature and serves the highest purpose. From deep within the underworld, it rolls a ball of dung into the sky to become the sun. What I get from what I get from this, I feel like with that ram here, you know, the ram represents the Aries, and the Aries is, uh, it's the child, it's the child of the zodiac. It's the very first, uh, it's the very first zodiac sign, and it often represents a baby, somebody new in the world, somebody whose experiences are new. Uh, they touch fire, burn their hand, you know, um, and they, you know they learn from their experiences, and they can easily be fooled sometimes. Because, you know, they're new. They're fresh. Now, I believe this is... And the reason I say that is... I believe this message is for a younger person. And with the Aries being the baby of the deck and that ram there... I feel like it's a younger person here. And... They want to do the right thing. You know, uh, they have their... They feel like they have their mission. And I feel like they feel like they have their mission because they're the high priestess. Whoever this Virgo is, I believe you're I believe you're showing up as a high priestess because I believe that is your calling and that's what you are. And you have a lot of wisdom. But before you can spring into action, it requires truth and the light to be seen. Okay? Uh, but it's saying here that you have to pay attention or you're gonna miss the in, the, the message. And you have to pay attention to signs and symbols. And the, the thing about it is, is it says here uh, that the scarab is the lowliest creature and serves the highest purpose. Do not, I, I think maybe because of your inexperience in the world so far, uh, and, and that comes with youth, of course, sometimes you might see things surface level and you might judge things based on appearances and how they look and how they sound because it sounds and looks convincing. But just like the scarab being the lowliest creature in the world, the scarab is always uh, found where something is dying and, and being born. The scarab uh, in ancient Kemet actually represents rebirth. And it became an ancient, ancient symbol for rebirth. I mean, uh, I mean, if you look at my arm here, you see I wear a scarab on my uh, wrist. This represents a uh, rebirth. Someone going through a rebirth come with the butterfly you got a rebirth and a transformation be very very careful because because you are young and you're still uh and you're still learning even though your your path is a high priestess you have it's trying to tell you and this whole experience was trying to tell you that things are not always what they appear to be because someone speaks in a soft voice because someone sheds tears and cries you know and gives you a lot of emotions they can be emotionally manipulating you uh they can be trying to make things look a certain way to you in order to to to, to get your favor 
in order to swing you in a certain direction. Do not, and a person that might seem like they're more abrupt, more rough, you know, uh, might seem a little more reckless because of how they speak or how they come out the mouth sometime, that person can be divine. It's kind of like a story I heard uh, the brother uh, Bobby Hammett say one time where there was a man on the side of the road that was looking for God. He was looking for God, uh, so he was on a long road and he passed uh, this little prostitute that was sitting on the side of the road with a titty hanging out, you know, smoking on a cigarette. And every single time that uh, he got back on this road looking, searching for God, he would ask her, hey, have you seen God? I'm trying to find the most high, you know? And he would pass her, looking, looking, asking, trying to find God. The first few times that he traveled down his road, he ignored her. The last time he finally said, let me just ask this uh, crazy, crazy woman over here on the side of the road with a titty hanging out with a cigarette in the side of her mouth, if she know where God is, because I've been looking everywhere. And right then when he asked her, she became illuminated. And this person could see, you know, her crown light up. And she said to him, I am God. You've been, you've been passing me all this time. And I am God sitting here. I am God and I have infinite wisdom for you. But, but you couldn't see it in me. And, and you, you wouldn't bother to ask me for it because of how I look. You judged me based on my station in life. We're human then we're all put here for different reasons. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> you open one up, you know, as far as go. You don't know what is inside of a person. And you judge them based on their vocabulary, based on how good of the Queen's English they speak, how they talk, how they verbalize things, if they got gold teeth in their mouth or not. You don't know what a person has, the wisdom. You could be talking to God in the face. God could be right in front of you. With six missing teeth. Walking barefoot. Homeless in the street. But you would never believe it. Smelling like a whole trash dump. And that can be God you're talking to right there. That came in that form. Because he's trying to teach you a lesson. They're trying to open your eyes and make it easier for you to recognize the signs and symbols like this book says. So I believe the lesson here for you is learn to recognize the signs and symbols. Understand the way your mind has been programmed. You know, uh, anyone that's listening, the way you've been programmed to uh, understand what a witch is, the way your mind has been programmed uh, to uh, identify a person's character and who they are and what they have to offer based on how they look, sound, and dress is not the way to go. You're going to miss a whole lot in your life. As a high priestess, you're going to have to be able to really discern between people. You know? Like the minister said before, sometimes, you know, to reach our people, you can't go above them. Sometimes you got to go beneath them. When you're trying to get through to people and help people, and I believe because you're a high priestess, you are going to be helping a lot of people in your future. Even now, because you are high vibrational, but you can't always feel like uh, you're going to be above people. Sometimes you got to go beneath people to get to them, to help them. You got high priestess working at McDonald's, mopping the floor and carrying the trash out right now. That nobody want to hear what they have to say because they believe that this person don't got nothing to say because of their station in life. But little do you know, oh yes, what's my, let me tell you something. Little do you know or understand that that might be God that came there to work at a McDonald's mopping the floor and taking out the trash so that they can get through to the people that they need to reach. Because if that walking god or goddess came as a billionaire, they would be somewhere on a damn island and they would not fulfill their purpose. If they're in a billionaire circle, only surrounded by people with money, they're only going to 
get they're only going to reach and access uh, the people that are in their circle so how are they going to get the message to the person that it's for intended for the most high places people in the lowliest of places in this earth and planet and places so that that people that need to be touched and reach can be I've prayed on my knees so many times and asked God why God will not win the mega millions God I've been praying for the Powerball in the name of Jesus give me the Powerball give me the mega million numbers damn it you gave me gifts why can I have those numbers Lord <laughs> And the Most High actually did reveal it to me. They said, because we know your ass. If you hit the lottery, you're not going to run into the people you're supposed to. You're not going to touch the lives that you're supposed to. Everybody don't watch social media. Everybody is not on YouTube. Everybody's not on Instagram. Some people you have to have face-to-face -face interactions with. Some people you have to walk beside them carrying out trash. Some people you got to climb the steps up to the airplane at the airport cleaning the plane next to vacuuming while you're talking and ministering to them. Some people that you minister to, you know, might be standing next to you with a toilet brush cleaning out the toilet. Everybody that you need to reach is not going to be in a high place. So that's why we send certain people and, and we keep you in a certain place economically so that you can be forced to work and dwell and be and live amongst the people that you need to get to. So you have to really open your eyes and not judge uh, uh, people by one, their station in life, how it sounds, how it looks. Let's go on to this next card here. The Ten of Fire. I said the ten of fire, not water. <laughs> All right. Yes. Even on the longest night, fire burns sure and bright amid the bare branches of a dark wood. Candles have been lit so that people may find their way home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Each small flame has been kindled as a prayer, profound, beautiful, and sacred. Together, the tiny lights combine to form a circle of safety and sanctuary, a world full of holy magic. Peace suffices everything. Fire is spirit itself. Joy is its blessing. Sanctity, safety, light, peace, joy, reverence. The power of fire is found in countless small moments of joy, insight, gratitude, and kindness. The infinite number of tiny flames that together create the power of your spirit. Observe and honor the forces that flow through your life rather than fighting for power over them. And you arrive at the sacred place of sanctuary and reverence where peace and joy are found. Then the spirit of life will burn brightly in and through you into the world, lighting the way for those who follow. At the winter solace, solstice, the longest, coldest, darkest night of the year, the spark of new life rests within the womb of the Great Mother. On this night, carve your name into a golden candle along with a single word or symbol of your goal for the next cycle of becoming. Light it and honor your power to kindle fire and bring blessings into the world. Yes. They said, amid the bare branches of dark wood, candles have been lit so that people may find their way home. That's you out here, High Priestess. That's you. That's you in lowly, high and lowly places. You're here to light the candle and, and illuminate things to people in all spaces so they can find their way home. It's people in darkness out here. It says the fire is found in countless small moments of joy. And I relate that sm small moments of joy small moments of joy wealthy people that already have a lot going on and it doesn't mean that they're happy or illuminated because they're wealthy don't get me wrong uh the most high places people in circles of wealth as well to bring illumination and and raise the vibration of people with wealth 
it's for everyone you know illumination is for everyone that the opportunity to raise the vibration is for all people from all walks of life but I'm just using this uh, as a learning tool for you to just understand so that you don't uh, 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 miss the discernment here in thinking because of the way someone looks, because of their lack of finance or their lack of their station in life, you don't, you don't judge someone. Wealth does not make you a good person. Having access to more resources and things does not mean you're illuminated or that you're doing something better. Small moments of joy can be found anywhere in life. A high vibrational person can be somewhere in a warehouse mopping the floor beside somebody else, you know, and they could exchange or give them some information or open their eyes to something that illuminates that person and opens a person's up, uh, opens a person up and brings them enlightenment. And in that moment, both people become a, like a flame. Both people experience that small little moment of joy because of that insight and gratitude and that kindness you just infused into them. You did a great thing in the heavens. They see you. They see you when you're in a lowly place uh, ministering to someone, following your divine path. You don't know that the, the person that you light that fire up under or into in whatever walk of life, whether you're feeding the homeless working at a soup kitchen, working at a homeless shelter, handing out blankets to the poor, you don't know, they could be the one that ministers to your ass. You think you're doing them a favor, they the one that's uh, uh, ministering to you. Some people go homeless because they want to detach, just like Siddhartha, the Buddha, and go live as a monk. Some people are homeless by choice because they want to detach from too many earthly things and responsibilities so they can be free to fulfill a spiritual path. But who are you to judge? You, can, you don't know. You can light your flame into somebody, anybody, in any stage or walk of life. And you don't know how many flames as a result that person may go back and light as well. And it goes on and on and on. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Anyone that lasted for this hour in 12 minutes and 26 seconds, I do thank you. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of this very cold uh, January day. Uh, and take care.